Hey, everybody, welcome to Escrow Tuesdays. Uh, it is Tuesday again, Nari. Yes, it is. Yeah, Tuesday it, it again, always is that time. Of, you know, last time on the show, we said, hey, what, what, what day is it? Of course, it's always going to be. <laughs> the 25th anyway, session. That's right. I'm Charles Swarmer, with Time Major Realty, and this is Nari and Wen over there. Wait, hey, you've got the Time Major Realty thing, too. Um, yeah. I think you're, supposed to, you're in my office, or you're in my messy studio, as I can see. <laughs> All right, right over here is uh, a little Baby Yoda. Of course, he's not Baby Yoda anymore, but he's sipping the Aria Kool-Aid. We'll get to that later. But this week, now, right, guess who we have today? We have a very special guest. Yeah, so special. Yeah. Right? So elusive. I mean, we spent hours trying to get hold of this person. <laughs> yeah, I showed up I'm here. Like the I'm kind of like the of, uh, you know, time zone issues, but we've got the amazing and talented and famous Tina Lombard. Welcome to the show, Tina. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about Tina. I know you're you're kind of hanging out with Denver Dillon there in, uh, you know, the great state. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, well, I have been the, in the pleasure of um, being with Aria De um, Denver for the last four years since Dillon started it. Um, previous to that, I'm from Seattle. I've been in Seattle most of my career. I've been doing this for about 29 years. And so when I left Seattle, I was part of Aria. I came here, and naturally, when Dillon started up, I joined and so I love it, love it, love it. Been doing mortgages for 28, 29 years. Started when I was eight years old. So, you know, eight years <laughs> old. All right. So, let's, hey, Tina, yeah. let's reel it back to like <laughs> negative nine months and, you know, figure out where Tina came from. I like the style. I, I like the way you do math. You're math genius, genius. Yeah, that's right. So, what I well, do. I calculate though, that I gestation mortgages. period. <laughs> I've been, well, well, you I know, I do. about chickens. They, they take only 21 days. Lucky them, right? <laughs> So, so I have, um, I've been doing mortgages. I've been working for the bank. I started out as a stockbroker in my life and didn't want to do that. So got into banking and excelled. I was like the number one loan officer at U.S. Bank in five states for a long time. And then finally somebody said, hey, why don't you jump over into mortgages? I thought, okay. So I went and I just took it with a passion. I've been doing home loans. I, I sat in banks. I also sat, sat in real estate offices. Um, for years. So and this I, isn't happening um, while you're only like one or two years old and you're in grade Imagine school. that. They have an infant program that is specialized for interns, in, you know, the, the, the very specially smart. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> were, were you so always in Seattle back. or Denver? Did you, were you, uh, did you come from a different country? Give us a little background on, you know. Well, no, no, I, um, I eat like I'm from a different country because I eat everything, right? But the, I am, I was born and raised in, um, I was an Air Force brat, so my father was from New Orleans, and he met my mother in the Philippines. Oh, wow. And um, he was in, in the Air Force. We were stationed in California, where I was born, in Palo Alto. Wow. And then we moved to Nebraska, Guam. We lived in the Philippines. Um, and then we moved back to Seattle, where my father, um, his family was at. And we actually he retired there. So I grew up as a native in Seattle for quite some time. Um, wow. I did a lot in the Philippine community. I, I do a lot of music. I started in a rock and roll band, Charles. Right. Oh, and yeah. So we got to hear you're on, her. You're on YouTube, and um, they instead they pick some guy that's like six inches shorter than you to be the lead singer of Journey. <laughs> what happened there? What is going on? You know, right? I, mean, I, I still have a petition going on for me to yeah, still, you know, get up you, there right? and do the whole Steve Perry thing. <laughs> but, um, but so, you know, we did the Foreigners, we did the Heart, we did um, Toto, and then we did R&B and SOS, all that fun stuff. So I did music, you know, then when I went to college, um, I, you know, I got into the University of Washington. I was on the dean's list the first year, which is surprising because most of my high school life, I wasn't in school. I was skipping. I was in the band room playing rock guitar. But um, I finally, you know, I went to college and I actually paid my way through college um, singing in my uncle's band. We sang at the top of the Hilton. I think um, it was just amazing, amazing. And so I was able to pay for all my college cash. I didn't have to take out student loans and I just party, wow. you know, Monday through Saturday at the top of the Hilton. I got paid uga amounts of money, and right. I was able to graduate business, business administration. And you know, after that, you know, I, whatever, you know, I, I started doing music, but I got married and had kids, and I started doing music in the church. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of gospel choirs. Um, shout out to Immaculate Church Wait, in Seattle. Did you say you gospel know? choirs or gospel, gospel choirs? I you know what? <laughs> gossip <laughs> slash gossip. gospel choirs. I think it's one of the same. <laughs> So I'm in the same. So, so you know what? I just really I like him tells more and more because this man is intuitive, psychic, yes, gossip choirs. And um, but yeah, so we did that for quite some time. I, I did I was a music director in different places, but I also had the opportunity. I was in this Filipino community in Seattle, something crazy. 
and I'm a very young age, and um, I sing I at see that. parties. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I sing I at all, you know, the, the weddings, and every everything. I sing. so I was um, notable, and then people actually asked me to uh, do a, a television show. So I started hosting a Filipino television show, and wow. it was the number one uh, television sh- public access TV show in Washington State. Is it was it years. in English or was it in Tagalog? No, it was in English. Uh, Filipinos speak 527 dialects. That is so true, including the Saya. Okay. The Saya, Kano, wow. Tagalog, Ilocano, I mean, and yeah, all these little variations. Right. But they all will speak English and write English better than any English professor. Right. So mm. I got away with, you know, meeting movie stars and council people and, and famous singers and um, from all around the world, Sharon Kaneta, Jackie Panora, all these crazy What about, did you, did you ever meet Kula Desma? No, no, I didn't. I, yeah, I think did. I was, I was before that time. <laughs> <laughs> hey. dates, but I was 12 at the time but it was just a different date so um but you know so I was able to who who was it um I sang with people who like this guy was the Johnny Mathis of the Philippines I can't remember Re- uh Rico Puno no somebody else pretty I good forgot. but yeah uh, uh-huh. I'd like to sing on stage with them and all this fun stuff you know um I said Jack Corrales sang with her and you know um all these crazy people so so anyways, uh, so the show actually- Filipino singers are crazy. That's what Tina that? just said. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all nuts. All, all okay. nuts. Okay. In a but, good way. Um, so anyway, so I, I did a lot of I did a lot of entertainment. And then um, after I did the Filipino show, that got to be too much. I actually started doing stuff for TBN, the um, the Christian station. Oh, is that that, that oh yeah. Yeah. And I, did, I had no idea that they were right in my um, town of Federal Way, Washington. They had their station, and um, my girlfriend actually was the um, office manager. And they said they were looking for not a biracial um, TV host, but a like a quad racial whatever. And I had like four or five plus um, um, nationalities within my bloodline. So they're like, "You're hired," you know. And I have this TV, you know, background. So I did that for years in Seattle. Then when I moved up to Denver, I did the TV and show up here. So that now was- I see why she's so busy. She's, she's all over the place. Like, you know, wow. this is it's like amazing. Before, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it's before like Facebook and Twitter and whatever. The only platform you had, you know, was basically like television. And so, what you know, about MySpace? Live shows. You know, just to, you know, I did I couldn't advertise US Bank or, or whatever, you know, I, I'm a mortgage broker because it was all volunteer work. But I had people driving from all over the state to come and do a loan with me. That's how I became the number one loan officer at US Bank. I have people wow. driving from all four corners of the state. I want to do one with Tina. Tina's my loan officer. You're not her client. I'm her client. <laughs> this kind of stuff. And um, and so when I was on TBN, they're like, well, TBN is the Christian station. So, you know, anything that she does is up and up. I don't even have to check her out. So, mm-hmm. I mean, so I never really could say, you know, come to me at ABC Mortgage. I just said, hey, as a mortgage loan officer, blah, blah, blah. You know, we had this, um, Ron Sims, who was the HUD secretary for the United States. He was on my show. He's from Seattle. I had the head of Social Security. I had the governor. I have these crazy people, crazy people on the man, show. Look at Tina name drop, man. We got to write down. <laughs> I all know. The you know, so oh, the police oh, chief gonna... had all these people. So for me, <laughs> that's how I excel with, with, you know, and I did, I worked for the Air Force Base. So a couple of the Air Force One pilots actually did VA loans for them because oh, all these, because yeah. um, um, I was by the Fort Lewis and Air Force One, and the people are like, oh, we want Tina Lombard to do a loan. And I'm like, yeah, wow. pick a number, you know, but yeah. <laughs> pick a number, I'll call you. So, uh, I mean, all right, so you're doing all these loans, but maybe Nori will get to that, that, <laughs> that um, <laughs> nagging question <laughs> of. Yeah, so with all this entertainment around you and being on this TV show and that TV show and being so infamous, why did you decide to go into the business and the real estate? Yeah, that, thank you for asking. That's a good question. Um, well, you know, my mother had a fifth grade education from the Philippines. Uh-huh. And um, she came here and her dream was to buy land like crazy. And so and before my mother had passed away, she bought like 10 acres at a time of, of raw land. Oh. She bought houses like crazy everywhere they went. She actually bought a, an apartment complex. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had like no education. And I had women my, um, that I knew had, you know, PhDs and master's degrees and they barely owned their house. The difference was my mother had a fantastic realtor that believed in her. He was, I think they were Italian and um, they loved, my mom loved her cooking, loved everything. And uh, they, they formed a friendship. And the difference between my mother and w- women who had careers in, in education, 
is that she had a good realtor that believed in her. And when a deal came up, he said, Dolores, um, buy this house. Mm -hmm. You know, let's flip this happen. It's, it's a HUD home. And so she had somebody that, that believed in her and that's how she bought all those properties. Now with me, same thing too. Um, I feel like the, the more information I give people, the more they enables them to buy land and, and that sort of thing. So when I got into stockbroking, hated it every <laughs> <laughs> There's little people friends. Were you the, were you the one shorting oh, you know, GameStop for all this week? I know, with GameStop, AMC, GameStop. what's going on? No, I, 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 no, my mother, was. She, she, and when the stocks would plummet, her friends were like, what's your daughter selling me? I'm like, I can't do this. So uh -huh. I, went to, I went to loans and um, <laughs> did very well with loans. And so I had a lot of people, and I really helped people get their businesses, get their cars, get their houses. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was a feel-good thing. And yeah. people loved you for life. I still know my clients from life, you know? And um, so for me, I'm thinking real estate was natural. I tried to run away from real estate. One time I got to radio, I started working for Salem okay. radio, radio Communications. And um, I had people going, what are you, crazy? Why are you leaving? You know, we need you. Nobody wants to do our loans. You're the only one that would take our loans. And I realized it's more of a ministry. Because, you know, I have friends, I say, this is what you do for your loan. Do this application, do this, do this. And they go to the loan officers, and the loan officers wouldn't give them the time of day, either because they were, you know, unwed women, single women, they were not the right height, right age, background. And um, so I was doing, I was doing um, radio and I kept having mm -hmm. people say, well, that's great. Just do mortgages on the side. And during 911, um, when I was 15, the rates dropped from like, um, from like 6.5 down to like 5.1 or something. And everybody went, um, went, went you know, cuckoo and started getting loans like crazy. That's why I got pulled back into business. So it wasn't that I wanted to do business. I fell into it and I couldn't get away. Wow. And I mean, even now, you know, people say, why don't you do real estate? I mean, that's mm -hmm. great. But I, I was a freak with numbers. I love numbers. I was like a, a um, algebra, trigonomics, everything. I, I did everything as far as math. And for me, crunching the numbers is something I see in my sleep. Well, oh, well Tina Lombard will crunch that your is. numbers anytime. <laughs> just in case you just joined us here on Facebook, uh, we are here with the great Tina Lombard. And uh, boy, just an amazing amount of just activity just rushing out of your brain, Tina. This I know. Awesome stuff. So, all right. Yeah, so, you're doing great. all this stuff. You're singing, you're, you know, doing loans and, and uh, you're bouncing around from base to base, whatever. And then, Suddenly, you're involved with Aria. Now, obviously, you probably have been involved in many, you know, um, nonprofits and things, and you seem like a, a very generous person. But then, you are now the incoming president for the Greater Denver chapter. There's only 41 of those, you know, in the whole 17,000 kind of group network. You know, so how did that happen? T take us on a journey of of how you just did Aria find you, or did you find Aria? No, I, I sought Aria out when I was in yeah. Seattle. Oh. Somebody brought me to Aria. Aria has like a building in Seattle. They got like so who is that somebody? We want names, Tina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff and names. <laughs> well, Mayumi Sugar actually, um, she's one of my my realtor friends in um, Seattle, okay. and mm -hmm. um, um, she was like, you know, Tina, I get, need to come in before having a lunch and learn. So I came, and there was like forty people in this room, and I knew a lot of these realtors and bankers from the get go, from doing loans and stuff. And I mean, they have this family like thing going on, you know, they're like, here, grab a button, sign $50, you sign, you're a member, go. Oh, it really I'm is. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Don't worry, I think was I must not. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, okay, okay. But then, I mean, it was like, you know, your family, you, you, you got the same issues we got, you're joining. And I just loved that. It was like, would you like to join? It was like, listen, you're in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is part of what our family and our DNA. So I joined Aria and there was such a support for me. And when I came up here, you know, I really didn't know anybody except my fiance. And um, Aria was like, well, let me gravitate towards Aria because I'll start meeting people in my business and network. And it wasn't around at that time. And this was 2015. So Dylan, I believe, started in 2017. Right. And it's, somebody said, hey, did you know Aria was starting? And it was Christine Wen. She said, do you know Aria is having a lunch and learn at Del Fresco's or something? Or Elway's? I'm like, what are you talking about? She brought me and she said they're having a grand opening. And so I went to the Ritz-Carlton and, um, and Dylan treated me like I was... Like he knew me all my life. I just met him for five minutes. And he was very <laughs> gracious and said, yes, we're sold out, but I will get you in. And here's oh. my phone number. It was my personal phone number. Call me when you get there. And I'm like, his just grace and just class about him. And once again, it was the same Aria family thing. You want to join Aria? Your family. 
Yeah, yes. no, it is. It is amazing. And Dylan is great. I first met uh, Denver Dylan uh, in Orange County, I think it runs 2016, 2017, right when he just started. And uh, what a cool guy. Just, I mean, just nice yeah. to do anything for you. And the funnest guy to hang out with. And so I, I tell people there are Oh, yeah, he's a party to... animal. Woo. That too. Yeah, so, so <laughs> you, know, you know, thank God I'm over 21, right? Okay, so what well, I got. <laughs> no, but you said you were 15. <laughs> Oh no, that was only a year ago. <laughs> so I, t I tell people there's three reasons why I joined Aria. I think you're good at math, yeah. Tina. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> I'm very, I'm, very I'm, I'm good at storytelling too. You, you notice that? Yeah, but, I love um, it. Yeah, you got, I got me. I've got three reasons why I joined Aria Personal in Denver, and that's number Dylan one. Nguyen, huh? Okay, Dylan Nguyen. Uh huh. Joella Odarte and Lisa Nguyen. There you go. The three ah. ex-presidents. I'll go into battle with them. All these three people, I'll go into battle with them anytime, support anything they do. These people will get in your face when it comes to something they're passionate about. And, right. and Joella is a pretty in. big party animal too. We're calling you out, Joella. But yeah, all I have to do is say, Tina, do this. There's a party afterwards. And that meant, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but. But very, very personal, but they're hard, they're core. They've got this burning coal inside of them. And when they're when they latch on to something, you know it's going to be success. You know they're not going to sleep at night until this thing gets done. And it's usually great causes that not not benefit just them, but benefit a hundred plus people. And they're so much fun to be around, so easy to talk to. When it comes to talking to political people or people in the industry, higher ups, they're on one to one for, uh, personal relationships with everybody, uh, mm -hmm. first name basis. And um, I just I just want to be like them. You know, because they they're in, they're inspiring and they do so much for the community. So there are a lot of reasons to join Aria, but basically it's the people, it's people and mm -hmm. leadership that make you um, rise to the occasion and make you want to be ten times better. And they give you the permission to be ten times better, and they make you feel like yes, you can. Right. Come along with me; I'll take you for that ride. Right. So that's why I'm with Aria Denver. Wow. Well, you know, you've mentioned that word crazy a lot during this uh, kind of <laughs> so um we'll pivot uh from that word uh, i don't know how you say that in tagalog uh, i know it's like is it like um, local oh, local <laughs> oh, i don't stop right there the rest is all dirty words but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy okay so we have uh all the Crazy, crazy story. stories. Yes, yes. And we have another crazy story that maybe you would like to share. Um, I know in your maybe how many years? 15 years was it, Tina, yes. that you're in the mortgage industry? <laughs> 20 years. Because I 29. had a past life and then I came oh, back. Okay. Past life. So, got <laughs> so it. 29 years. Yeah. Add those up. Okay. Now, do you have any stories or any crazy Okay. Now, do you have any? stories or any of course of... she does she's crazy. yeah well but you know she's got to go through her memory bank and i know she can she'll probably dig one up real fast that you can well, I, I got share a crazy with story us that's a prolific it's, that's kind of funny but it's kind of not uh -oh. i had uh, uh, one of my favorite clients he um Indi uh, indian descent and okay. um very successful here and he, he came through through a realtor um it was like a 1.3 million dollar home and he put like a hundred thousand dollars down earnest money Great. Okay, that's okay. great. Mm -hmm. Well, the listing agent, um, her best friend was a was a lender, and um, she that her best friend lost the deal, and I got the deal. So this woman was in the same real estate office I was in. This listing agent, and she came by my office every day. She said, "If you do not close on time, I'm gonna snatch that hundred thousand dollars." I'm like, "What? Get, get, get out of here!" Well, the thing <laughs> is, with this gentleman, you know, and I'm like, "Why would you say that?" You know, this mm -hmm. gentleman's like one of the richest clients I've ever known. He bought, uh, but in the thirty days that I got his application, he bought a bank. He sold two houses. He bought two Teslas. <laughs> he bought, I mean, he did everything in the moon that you tell people do not do, you know, and then um, it didn't file his tax returns. At the time. He didn't have to file his tax returns because until October or something. But, Excuse um, me, uh, Tina, I'm busy. I can't answer your phone. I had to get that VOE and I'm buying a bank. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, you can, you know, the transcripts, all that kind of stuff, you know, you, you know, you can't just go electronic filing because you'll never see it for three weeks. Well, this guy's accountant said electronic filing and he believed it. So we're like countdown and here it is um, June 29th. And then I had a company at the time who was very, um, I'm not gonna say racist, but they just weren't, um, they weren't as friendly, diversity friendly. 
and they gave him every condition under the flipping moon because they did not believe that his W-2 was, was almost a half a million dollars. Him oh. and his co-guard. They didn't believe it. And so they did everything they can to stop this man. And the 19th hour, I'm like, oh, my God, if it doesn't close by midnight tonight or whatever, you go to the dock south, this one's going to snatch his $100,000. Yeah. And I'm crying, <laughs> right, right. Out, walking around, losing hair. I'm just, you know, eating donuts. And, and he, um, he calls me up at, like, midnight. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just don't know what's going on. And, I mean, they, they conditioned him up to yin-yang where it is a risk of violation. They conditioned this man, like, wouldn't be. This is what he said to me. He says, Tina, why are you worried? He goes, I am from India. I eat the color of my skin. He goes, I'm used to this. You have to be two times faster, three times whatever. He said, um, I'm used to this happening to me. You, you are not used to this. All oh. my life, I'm used to this. That's why I'm very successful. This is $100,000, $100,000. I'm calling you because I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Oh. I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> he, said, he said, it's God's will. If it'll close, it'll close. If not, it's God's will. And I'm like, and my God, I mean, he taught me so much. And it's a funny story, but it's not, it's a sad yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's No, that's of, so of humbling. Of course. And he wasn't, he wasn't like, I can't believe these people. I'm on a suit all this kind of stuff. He was like, this guy's will. He goes, you know, Tina. He goes, you know, you look like me. He goes, you know, we have to go through this. I'm used to it. This is nothing. You should see. He said, you should see what I go through. He goes, he goes oh. that's why. He goes, it's important for us to do what we do. He goes, but he goes, you, I'm worried about you. Are you okay? And that broke my heart. But um, it, it taught me so much, you know, mm. and so that was my crazy story. I've got others that are more salacious. No, that, no, that's wonderful, though. Yeah, that's that's it's really kind of oh. you know, the double-edged sword kind of thing here. So that's yeah. yeah. But we got the long clothes, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> wow, that's a cool story. Well, thank you for sharing that. Tina, um, you know, out of your millions of crazy stories, now that's that's just you know when that happens when the client kind of reaches out and say, "Hey, are you okay?" You know, uh, you know, is your heart still beating? You know, I've, I've had yeah, a few I, deals like that. Yeah, I was like this with the with the hand of steel. I was like, like oh yeah. yeah can, okay. you, can you help me with that defibrillator, please? Um, yeah. Seriously. Well, there's mm -hmm. Tina jumping around in the great outdoors. Of course, what a great thank you for sharing that with us. And of course, out outside of the wilderness, she is in the inside of wilderness. A pretty good oh, uh, pool player. Uh, no, but those heels look good, don't they? I know. That sounds they like do. I love that shoe. <laughs> and she's wearing camouflage pants. That's cool. All right. Yes. yes. All right. So let's go to a real quick top five list uh, for why Denver? So we'll start off calling off here. So cannabis is legal. Well, of mm -hmm. course it's legal in a lot of states, but there's more to it than just cannabis is legal. I mean, you guys were the first state to really kind of, you know, open things up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the thing is with cannabis here, there's no stigma here. So a lot of people use cannabis, not just for smoking or recreational, but they use it for ointment, for medicine, mm -hmm. for pain relief. And it is very acceptable here. So a lot, like I say, domestic housewives use more cannabis than you can believe. We can grow them, you know, um, in our backyard or whatever to a certain limit. So it is legal. So a lot of people, for, for health reasons, they come to um, to Denver so they can use cannabis freely. And yeah, it's a big thing, especially if you, people with um, seizures, that sort of thing. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. There's some amazing uh, benefits or uses for it. I know I was in Aspen when they opened the first dispensary, and it was right next to, I kid you not, a fur salon. Uh, in downtown oh, yeah. Aspen and I'm like going all right well should I buy the sable or should I get some edible gummies you know it was kind of <laughs> I only had a certain <laughs> amount of time or should I go to Montclair and buy that seven thousand dollar ski outfit I was eyeing and I, you know well you know what the thing is in Denver you can grow a plant and you can harvest it yourself and make your own gummy bears we all have our little recipes wow wow that, that is, is so hi sure speaking of being spaced out on Space bars. Bears. <laughs> Space bars. So, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of the arms of the military are here in Colorado. I believe if anything, if Washington DC is ever compromised, Denver is like a next in line. They're not, you know? Oh, right. Mm. No. So we've got, and we've got every arm of the, of the military here, but there's a space force. We are already a mile closer to the um, atmosphere than any other place. Um, in oh, the that's country. true. Cause you're uh, kind of up there. It's thin up you're there. way up there. And Colorado Springs with the space force and everything else is, is, is even closer. I mean, I, right, where I live right now, I'm at 6,700 um, elevation where I live. So wow. Colorado Springs is actually higher. 
So the Space Force, anything with, with military, anything with um, um, vendors that come off of the military, and as far as safety, I want to be in Denver. <laughs> to happen, I'm going to be in Denver. But the Space Force, the military, is a very strong reason to be here. Wow, that's amazing. All right, well, you, you were saying um, when we were talking on a pre-show that you know, the benefit of economically is that you get the West Coast paycheck, even though you're not exactly on the West Coast, but, you know, the homes, there's a lot more value in the homes. So it's kind of a multiplier effect, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great because as far as the economy, you know, um, the far as, as far as pay, you get the pay is comparable to the West Coast and the East Coast. But as far as the houses are concerned, we don't have that inventory shortage. In fact, you're building another 25,000 homes oh, wow. just east of me, I'm saying. I mean, and they're building all the way around um, the Denver International Airport because of the space port and all these different things. The houses are a lot cheaper. So uh, I have like a 5,400 square foot house. In Seattle, maybe it's worth 1.5 million. And I snagged it here for right under 600,000. Wow. You know, so I'm running around, ah, you know, people think, oh, T lives in a mansion. Well, I live in Colorado, so I, I've got more money, and, you know, my, more bang for my buck. So right. we have a lot of people coming from California, from Miami, from different mm-hmm. places. They're like, you want what for what? Maybe because of cash out. <laughs> well, and, and, and the quality yeah. of the homes are, because they've got to withstand weather and stuff, right? It, I mean, it's not like everything is built with, you know, plastic windows and hollow core mm-hmm. doors, no. right? No, <laughs> no it, people here love nature. They love, everything is natural, organic, everything. Right. The houses are very, very high quality. You know, Lenore Homes, um, what else is the other uh, homes? Um, I forgot, but most of the home builders in the United States actually are centered, uh, headquartered here in Colorado. Hmm. Mm. There you go. They're centered here in Colorado. Richmond Homes, you know, all their mm-hmm. owners live here in Colorado because it's the central. And so you have very good quality homes, very competitive with their houses. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. And the mountain resorts, are those of nearby? Of course. Ooh, yes. Vail, Beaverton, um, um, Winter, yeah, ever, um, where else is there? Um, like Aspen is maybe three and a half hours. Vail is an hour and a half. You know, Breckenridge, um, Keystone, that's like an hour. That's it's nothing. It's it's Seattle traffic from, you know, Tacoma to Seattle. It's nothing. And so now, in LA, Colorado. that means you got out of the parking lot at LA. <laughs> right? okay. So yeah, going. yeah, I drive an hour. People are like, oh, it's so far. Boulder's so far. It's an hour away. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, people from the West Coast were like, what? You can get to Boulder and go hiking. I'm going to go to Boulder tomorrow, go hiking, and right. go up and down. And, and Vail is like an hour and a half away. Mm. So these resorts are very, very close. And, um, you know, I went to Breckenridge a couple of weeks ago, went skiing, you know, and it's just, it's such an easy drive. So that's a very good reason. If you're into outdoor recreation, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but it also has a, I guess you guys have a high tech side, right? It's not just all about nature and nature whatever. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's more yeah, about yeah. silicone and very, wires. Huh? Very, very high tech. Um, like I said, they're building the spaceport here. They're building a spaceport where you can actually cut, um, catch a plane, that a shuttle that goes out to the outer stratosphere and will land in London in two hours. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're very, very high tech. And so if you look under spaceport, you'll see they're building that down VIA. But you've got the Amazons, you've got the Googles, you've got the VA mm-hmm. uh, hospital here. Um, this is a good sister city to a lot of the tech um, cities um, on the East Coast and West Coast. Right. Because you have the talent here. You've got the people who are educated and they're, uh, they have experience in high-tech computers and, and everything else. So that Colorado, people don't know this, we're very, very rich in water. And so there's a 150-year covenant with California where we actually give water to California. Oh, right. So we're very, very rich as far as um, uh, resources. So Colorado is a very rich state. Mm-hmm. And so as far as technology with the, the military, so on and so forth, with the spaceport and the space force and in the military, we've got to be high tech. So there's a lot of talent here. So if a high tech company wants to hire a, a, a workforce, they can come to Denver and find it like that. Right. And talk um, about rich and good. resources. Um, you know, they say water is going to be, or it already is really the most scarce kind of commodity. You know, they thought <clears throat> oil was for a while, but it's actually fresh water. Um, it's, it's fresh water. Yeah. And the mountains, where do we get the water from? It's from the, the snow off the mountains. Yeah, the snow mm-hmm. melt. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so a lot of people realize that. I, I, I live next to Aurora, Colorado. They are rich with water. I don't know. It, it is amazing over there. And uh, um, yeah, with, but then you've got the high tech and then you've got more liberal kind of rules and laws and things. So what a great place. Well, I know. Well, we, we, we got the yin and the yang. Yeah. Yeah. We got the yin and we got the yang. It's funny because, you know, in Seattle, you know, nobody has guns or anything. It's just whatever. And here, everybody's slinging a gun. 
you know, and it's just right. kind of like the wild, wild west, but you've got people who- so It's like Texas, Texas with mountains, mountains, right? It's, it's like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like, it's high tech. So, um, I mean, it's very, very high tech here. And, um, but then you do have a bit of the country, which I love. I love right, the right, right. I love the, although I've been to Colorado, I ain't seen nobody in a cowboy hat, except for like the, the, the stockyard show. Okay. Everybody's high tech. Okay. You know, uh, downtown um, Denver is very, very high tech. And, but then boom, you go to Colorado Springs, you got nature, you got waterfalls, you got hiking, you got horses. People here where I live have horses in their backyard. Right, um, right. Instead I, of firing up the Camry, they fire up the, the Palomino. Yeah, I got the Camaro, but then we okay. got the Camaro. Then we got, you know, <laughs> but I mean, we've got coyotes in the back. People will see um, mountain lions. People will see um, mm -hmm. elk. They'll see deer in their backyard. But then you're driving down the street and it's an urban suburban area, you know. So if you like the outdoors and you have a high tech job, I mean, Colorado is a perfect marriage. It really right. is. Wow. Well, thank you very much uh, for that. Um, by the way, um, you know, uh, besides uh, Peter Lombard uh, here on our show, we have a few new guests. Um, but before we go and disclose who our next guests are, we always have a special segment for our guests uh usually a little bit of a surprise even to a surprise in nari sometimes um, so are you ready tina I, I, I can't be more ready than all right here we go here <laughs> we go it's tina lombard show. all right, all we, right. Are we are in are cameo gonna discover for the support guns of tina lombard and of course we were just kidding but uh so those are my real estate friends. Those we're are my real estate come friends. Come through with it. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to go through Tina Lombard's top Denver ski resorts. You know, Tina is a basically a ski bum in disguise, does yes. loans, but she's probably on the slopes here. So I know Doing I've loans. had the pleasure of uh, <laughs> hanging out over there. Um, so we'll kind of throw this out there, kind of jumbled up the odor. But all, all the order, all these um, ski resorts kind of look the same. They're so beautiful. Yeah. Right? So, um, all white mountains. so this one is Aspen Snowmass. As you know, it's like four mountains together, right? It is amazing. Uh, yes. Snowmass is the largest one. And I mean, uh, I remember taking a run from all the way to the top down to the bottom, and it takes 45 minutes. And man, your legs are shot by the time. Oh, that. that's nice. You know? yes, yes. And, the, and the snow, Tina, is like it's it might not be as powdery as Utah, but it's pretty close, right? I mean, yeah, it's pretty it's, dry. It's really nice. It's not like Sierra yeah. cement that we have down here. Um, that's actually Aspen Mountain, or that might be the Highlands. Um, and then, of course, that one you were just talking about, that's Breckenridge. Mm -hmm. you know, it's got, I guess, a little old town there. Sorry, the order's all messed up. That might be Beaver Creek or Breckenridge. That might be Breck. I can't remember. It's a little too flat for Breck. Yeah, that one is definitely Beaver Creek. And what do they serve at 3 p.m. every day at, uh, at Beaver Creek? I don't know, caviar, what is it? Cookies, remember? Chocolate. Oh, chocolate. okay, okay. Well, yeah. I know that Beaver Tin is where the billionaires go to get rid of, get away from the millionaires. Right, right, be, yeah. The, Beaver uh -huh. Tin. It, is, it is an amazing <laughs> resort. And they they host uh, you know the the World Cup uh, skiing events and stuff. I'm telling you the amount of wealth that congregates in Aspen between you know like Christmas and New Year's is amazing. You go to you know, the airport at Aspen. There's there's not a single tail number on any of those jets that even have an N in front of it, which denotes it's from the United States. It's all over. Russia. Yeah, it's funny because when you go to Aspen, you know usually you go to shopping malls or there's parking um, lots. Go to Aspen, there are a plane parking lots. There's parking yeah, yeah, lots for no, planes, it, private, private jets. Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. crazy. Now there is Vail and Breck. I mean, Vail is not quite in Aspen. It's a little bit before then, and it's got its own kind of crazy uh, younger culture thing. But um, Denver, Dylan, you better have an event in Aspen, or you better have an event here really soon. Yeah. There, some sort of a mini summit. You know, we just got to get out there and do something. We are hoping actually to have a GLS or the uh, Greater Le um, Global Luxury Summit in Aspen. And every time Denver's on an event, I'm going Aspen, Aspen. <laughs> well, you know yeah. what, Charles? Well, let's, make probably, let's, make gonna let's make that happen. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. Let's make it happen because we we can get with the ski resorts. I think a couple of people on our board um, have timeshares up there, or they know the promo people yeah. have timeshares. No, let's, it, let's it's possible. Something. I think the the biggest wow. tough, the tough thing is to get people from Denver Airport. I mean, if you flew them all in Aspen Airport, you know, it costs an arm and a leg. So it's that three and a half hour 
to get you can get a party bus. It, no, let me tell you, the whole time up there, it's so beautiful. You don't, you don't. It's not three hours driving in the desert. Yeah. It's like three hours. Like, oh my god, it's beautiful. Party yeah. bus will solve everything. <laughs> so um, here's a slide. Uh, if, uh, you know, once we get, uh, we're trying to get as famous and have as many followers on social media as Tina. Uh, we sure help. You could uh, subscribe and and uh, like our our posts here. We are trying, like we said many times, Nori, what are we trying to do? Get to 1 million followers. That's right. We are about how many followers short of 1 million? 1 million. That's right. Now we're getting <laughs> close there. All right. We need to work on that. All right. Well, Tina, upcoming actually is uh, a few of your other uh, up and coming leaders uh, that are incoming presence uh that got uh cindy tran at la colstow she's up next week and then we have the dynamic duo over in orange county um and that is uh mindy and uh julie uh, julie's the uh, 2021 president and we have then tracy lee from dallas uh you know basically denver without the mountains i guess okay you know. okay and with cowboy hats so okay <laughs> <laughs> and snakeskin boots. Yeah, there Ooh. you go. Anything uh, going on um, with your uh, chapter that we should know right. about? Well, we're going to have our installation next week, February 11th, and we're, we're going to be Zooming that live, so that'll be fun. Awesome. We okay. have a Mardi Gras theme this year, since half my family's from Louisiana. Right. Um, and then we're having uh, we're having our first homebuyer seminar, and that's going to be on March 11th. And it's going to be a little twist on the homebuyer seminar. We're going to do a Zoom link, but... Um, it involves rooms and different things. But anyways, we're doing that. All right. So first time home buyer for a beautiful ski in, ski out place in the Aspen Highlands for only like $30 million. Mountain properties. Mountain properties. Mm. Mountain properties. Yeah. yeah. We're going to talk about mountain properties and that sort of thing. But yeah. So that will be March March 3rd. So we wow. would like to invite everybody to that. All right. March 3rd. All right. All right. Mark your calendars. Uh, it's going to be great. And uh, we just can't look forward. Uh, we can't wait uh, to, you know experience your leadership there in Denver and uh man you're fun well you guys yeah. are fun. thanks for having this and thanks uh, yeah. for having me on the show you guys are just yeah energy 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 and I will help you get to that one million and we got to do some music stuff you know maybe we'll have you we'll have you back on you know and uh, we'll do We'll do some music collaboration. I'll send you some stuff over to record. Do you have like a home recording set up a little uh -huh. bit? Yeah, I got, I got all the, oh yeah, MIDI. I got everything set up. I got Kiwi uh, microphone. Wow, she even knows no. MIDI. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Go. We're good to go. Send me your tracks. All right, <laughs> yeah, I'll just send them over to you. But I need some singing, you know. I. Oh, I, I'll uh, sing. Okay. Yeah, I want to hear right. your beautiful and voice. Some piano playing <laughs> and stuff. No, without a doubt. Anyway, so next time I call, I hope you pick up my phone call. Now you know who I am. But, I'm like, yeah. yeah I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll take you off. I'll I'll take thank you, you for fitting us into your super busy schedule. I know you got loans blowing up. Um, but anyway, uh, Charles Swanberg here with uh, Escort Tuesdays with my co-host uh, Nari there. Uh, if you've got any loans that you need done, like right now, you know, yep. at like negative one percent contact Tina Lombard down there in Denver even if it's not even in Denver she'll give you some great advice yeah I, I can live mm -hmm. in California so right and oh, there uh, you go and then you've got any escrows uh, along with it uh, you know get it over to Nari and if you have anything Los Angeles related in real estate um, give me a call get it over to Char <laughs> all right everybody thank you again for joining uh, see you guys next week bye bye, -bye. <laughs>